Hello and welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be talking about Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink just came out a couple of days ago and I have been playing non-stop because the game is just a Baja blast. For those of you who are not in the know, Grand Blue actually started as a mobile game and has now turned into a console game. I believe the first iteration was Grand Blue uh, Fantasy Versus and now we finally got our action RPG Grand Blue Fantasy Relink by the developer Psy Games. I'm just some guy into internet and here are my thoughts on Grand Blue Fantasy Relink, a monster hunting game simplified. Spoiler warning, this video contains spoilers. If you don't want to be spoiled, well, you've been warned. The story. The story premise is fairly simple. You play as the captain of the Grand Cypher and you and your crew travel the skies in the search of Alistia, which is a utopia of some sort. Everything seems peachy until you and your crew lose control of Proto Bahama and are now forced to land in the Skydome of Zagrande, and this is where our story begins. While in the Skydome, we find out that these primal beasts that are kind of, they kind of control the environment, the fire, the wind, the water, the ice, Everything is going out of control, and we believe that this might be linked to why we have loss of our giant dragon as well. With the loss of the Grand Cypher and Proto Bahama, we now have a new mission while we're staying in the land of Folka. Our new mission now is to help the people of Folka from the Primal Beast in the hopes of also uncovering why we've lost control of Proto Bahama. We quickly find out that the reason why the Primal Beasts are losing control is because of a mysterious woman named Lilith, who is also the reason why we have lost control of Proto Bahama. And armed with this new information, we set off into the skies looking for a solution to help the people of Folka and regain control of Proto Bahamut in the hopes of continuing our search for Elistia. The story serves three purposes. One, it gives a reason for people to go on hunts. Two, the story is kind of a tutorial for what you'll be doing in the end game. As you go through the story, you'll be uncovering new characters, new items and gear, and most importantly, you're going to unlock the questing system, which is what you're going to be spending most of your time doing once the story is completed. And three, introducing a new core cast member. The way you unlock new crew members is by going down, hitting the subscribe button, the notification bell, ding that, you know, help, help me grow. That's enough of that. When you start off the game, you have a total of six characters to choose from to assemble your party. However, while, until you finish the story mode, you have to have the captain as a part of your party. You can play as whatever character you'd like, but you need to have the captain be a part of your party. Each character in the game plays incredibly differently, which was a concern of mine because there's like, I believe 17 or 18 characters in the game. I thought we were gonna get a bunch of repeat characters, but by allowing us to switch characters fairly early on in the game, they address this matter quite early, and I have to say it is phenomenal. As you progress through the game, you're going to unlock an item called Crewmate Recruit Card, which will allow you to recruit new crewmates. Regardless of your team composition, when we get these high quality cutscenes, we're always going to get the six main cast members. That is until you meet Id and he joins your party. This is the only character that is not part of the base roster that ends up in cutscenes once you've beaten the game. And on top of that, you actually get missions for him. This is why I believe that the new character known as Id is going to become a new member of the core cast of the Grand Blue Fantasy Relink franchise. The story does its job fairly well. However, it is not the most engaging or interesting story, but it does serve its purpose quite well. So I'm not going to complain about that until later in the video when I talk about what I don't like about the game. <laughs> Graphics, environment, and music. Right off the bat, I love the visual art style. It's high fantasy, bright colors, anime style, and I am here for it. I'm kind of tired of these hyper-realistic, dark, gritty, dead color games, which is supposed to reflect reality. I get it. Having a break from those kind of games with Grand Blue Fantasy was quite refreshing to say the least. For those of you who are interested, the game runs at a smooth 60 frames per second at 1080p. I know it's not 1440, but I'd rather a game at 60 frames per second at 1080p than a 1440 at 30 frames per second. I would have liked to have the option between performance and like high fidelity mode, but you know what? It's not really a big issue. The game is still fantastic and is eye candy throughout the entirety of the playthrough. As for the environment, you do have a couple of biomes to explore and fight in. The biomes are separated very similarly to Monster Hunter. You'll have a fire area, an ice area, 
regular type of area, not too, not too crazy, you know, just green pastels and all that kind of stuff. However, even though we have different biomes and I say you can explore them, the exploration is quite linear compared to Monster Hunter. It's like the, the, the area you're in is one big dungeon, right? It's not like a hub area that you can explore in the hopes of finding the monster. And the exploration is mostly reserved for story missions and not side quests. And as for the music, it's the music that's playing right now, that like that's been playing in the background. I'm gonna increase the volume so you guys can listen to it. But like, wow. <laughs> hub areas like where you have your blacksmith and your quest giver it is very reminiscent of kingdom hearts 2 when you're in twilight town and you're playing as roxas i have to say that the music for me it is such an integral and important part when playing these kind of games because it sets the mood and the tone of what's happening and i have to say that they regularly just knock it out of the park getting into the meat and potatoes of the review let's talk about gameplay first of all this is an action rpg not a j rpg if you're looking for a super in-depth leveling system and gears and all that kind of thing you're not gonna find that here. You can level up your characters all the way up to level 100, and you do have a mastery tree where you can unlock new skills. Each character has a total of eight skills, four being offensive and four being defensive. The rest of the upgrade system is mostly going to be relegating to upgrading your character's stats, like health, defense, how much stand damage they're doing, and also upgrading the skill that you've unlocked, like having a skill do more damage or having another skill where the cooldown will be reduced. For those of you who really want Want that RPG aspect, we do have something called sigils, which kind of acts as accessories or maybe armor in games. The sigils you unlock will give you things like more crit damage or maybe a faster charge for your charge attacks or even increase the dodge window for a perfect dodge. However, this is pretty much where the RPG elements end. Once you've beaten the story mode, you'll be able to change your party composition however you see fit without having to put the captain in it. To be honest, once you beat the story mode, this is when the it feels like that's when the game actually starts, right? It feels like you just finished the tutorial for the end game. Even though this is an action RPG, do not expect to be pulling crazy combos like in Devil May Cry or anything like that. Some characters do have combo potential. For example, Gran, the captain of the crew, does have some combo potential, but it's very, very limited. Mastering your character, and this is where the fun is going to come up, is each character has some type of gimmick. The main character, Gran, every time he completes a combo, his art level increases, which basically allows his skill abilities to do more damage, or if it's a support skill, the support skill will last longer or it will heal for more or decrease the enemy's defense even more than it normally would. Other characters like it have a meter that they have to fill. Once you fill that meter, you can then transform. Mastering and learning your character's gimmick is where you're going to be finding a lot of the enjoyment in the game. When you finally learn like what skills to use to pull off the gimmick, as fast as you can and then loop back into it it's just like you get this this weird sense of accomplishment of like having being able to pull off your combo three four times in a row without taking any damage honestly it's it's real nice it's real real nice if you guys are interested i would be more than happy to do a couple of character breakdowns for grand blue fantasy let me know in the comment section below if that's something you'd like to see moving to the cons of the game first off the story is generic at best and forgettable at worst i understand the point of the story is to introduce id to the cast and to bring it to the end game however i would have appreciated something with just a little bit more depth and I don't know, it felt like there wasn't really much love put into it. And I found myself actually skipping cutscenes just so I could get to the action because I just really wasn't invested in what was happening with the Grand Cypher's crew. Recruiting crew members should be more than just giving a card and then getting a cutscene introducing the character. I would have appreciated like when you try to recruit a crew member, you have to play as Grand and then you have to do a side quest where you find the character and 
like through doing the mission, you convince them to then join your crew. I know that every character that joins the crew is already a part of the crew, but these side quest missions could be a flashback. Before you guys say anything, I know there's a fate episodes that explain how the characters met Gran and how they joined the Grand Cypher. I get it. I don't want a cutscene. I want to play the mission. And it's not a cutscene. It's literally a still image with a bunch of text just explaining how it happened. That's not engaging. That's not how I want to meet my characters. That's not how I want to bring characters onto the crew. I know what I like and that's not what it is. Next is the lack of enemy variety. When it comes to like minions, you have, I believe, goblins, a couple of wolves, uh, and some elementals, right? If you have the fire elemental, then you get the wind, the dark, the light version, and like the fire version. You get it like, you'll get the enemy in a bunch of different color variants that do different effects, but it's essentially the same enemy. When it comes to boss monsters, there also isn't that many options. However, I am hoping that in future DLC content that they'll be adding some more regular boss monsters and not like only end game boss monsters. At the time of recording, I believe we have a total of 10 different boss monsters which is good but i don't see the game going for years and years and years with only 10 monsters if they want the if they want to increase the longevity of the game they're definitely going to have to add more boss monsters as the time goes on my biggest gripe with the game definitely has to be the difficulty. I'm not talking about the story mode. I know in the story mode, you have different difficulty settings and the story mode is more of a tutorial anyway. So I don't really care about the difficulty in there. What I'm talking about is the end game. The end game is too easy. There are three brackets of hunts, novice, veteran, and then a Zega Grande legend. And in those brackets, you'll find your difficulties going from easy, normal, hard, very hard, extreme, maniac, and then finally, proud. The first mission that I've ever felt any type of difficulty towards and thought I might lose was the last mission of the extreme difficulty. And the only mission that I failed more than once is the rank up mission when you had to fight Behemoth. Mind you, Bahama is at a level 120 dragon and your maximum level is level 100. That was the first time that I had to repeat a mission was when the enemy was 20 levels over me. Mind you, every single side quest I completed, I had to do under leveled and it was still too easy. None of this would bother me because I understand that proud difficulty is supposed to be the hardest difficulty. However, it took me like roughly 25 hours to get to the proud mode. Basically just like breezing through everything and then got a hard stop. If it didn't take 25 hours for me to get there, that's one thing. But 25 hours is a lot of time for me to get my first challenging mission. It's a bit much. I'm hoping in the DLC we're gonna get some more missions in proud mode and hopefully maybe a higher difficulty as well. The story is good enough and it gets you to where you have to go. However, the gameplay loop is so much fun that the mundaneness of the story doesn't remove anything from my overall enjoyment of the game, which speaks volume to how much fun the game actually is. If you like the concept of Monster Hunter, but you want something that's a little easier to get into and something you could just hop in and out of real quick, like unless you just have a short amount of time to play, this is the game for you. I highly recommend it. Go get the game at full price. This is definitely a buy on release game. Are you playing Grand Blue Fantasy Relink? And if you are, who's your main? Let me know in the comment section below. And before you head out, be sure to like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. And if you don't, well remember, at the end of the day, I'm just some guy on the internet and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.